Hello friends, this is Manyepa and I'm here to just um, work on this paper, the Chemistry 5070, which is pure chemistry for the year 2019, paper 1, which is multiple choice from question 1 to 40, but I'll do to question 1 to 20. Let's get to question 1. Argon, salt and water are common chemical substances used in our day-to-day -day life. Which of the following is correct about the basic unit particles of matter each of them is made of? So argon is made of atoms because it's a noble gas. Then salt is ionic because it's an ionic compound. Then water is made of molecules. My answer is B. Question 2. The rates of diffusion of two gases, X and Y, of equal volume are determined using the following apparatus. This is our apparatus colored liquid in this tube and then there's this beaker here then there's this porous pot y or oh, uh, with region y labeled then x here so this is gas y and uh, gas x entering into this beaker which is inverted after a long period the levels of colored water in both arms of the youtube remain the same which pair of gases would be responsible for this observation on this end and the water doesn't rise here and it also doesn't rise on either side so the, the the levels meaning pressure that is coming down and pressure here is the same my take was carbon dioxide and propane carbon dioxide and propane so let's look at the question again the rates of diffusion of two gases of equal volume are determined using the volume um using the following apparatus so here there's y here there's x and if, if at all these gases are diffusing at the same rate, uh, it means there won't be any difference in pressure inside here because the pressure here is coming from the atmosphere. So inside uh, here, there won't be pressure. The pressure won't increase because of X going in and it won't reduce extremely because of Y escaping at a faster rate. And one major factor which I looked at was mass. Okay, so when you look at these two, they are... I would say they are the same in terms of mass, so carbon dioxide and propane. And propane, my answer was... So when you look at that one, um, carbon dioxide has a mass of 44, and propane has got three carbon atoms. It's like this. And then it has got hydrogens all over it. This is 12, 12, 12, giving us 36. Then 36 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is about um, 44. They are of the same mass. Okay, so my answer was A. Number three, um, which of the following pieces of apparatus is not used to measure the volume, a volume of liquid? Is not used to measure the volume of liquid? Uh, my answer would be C, because it has no graduation. These have got scales here, calibrations. This also has a graduation here, which can be one liter, 500 mils, but this is a measure. Therefore, if a liquid reaches this level, it means it is somehow, you know, of a certain volume, specific volume. But this one is open. My answer is C, flat-bottomed flask. Get to question four. A mixture of two sorts was prepared with four different sorts using chromatography. The results are shown in the chromatogram below. Mixture, then one, two, three, four. Which two sorts are not contained in the mixture? So these are the sorts and this is our mixture. So which two sorts are not contained in the mixture? Um, this one may not be contained. This one is contained because look at the level. Understand that the level of the degree of solubility of every pure substance is unique to that substance. So every substance has got its own degree of, of rate of solubility in a specific solvent. So this one is the same as this. Then this one is same as that. So this one is not part of it, and this one is not part of it. So it's one and three. My answer is A. Uh, number five, the diagram below shows different energy levels around the nucleus of an atom. The K, L, M, there's also the N. It all goes on up to the P, up to, I mean, the J. The, it goes on and on. So K, L, M are, are the shells here. What is the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the energy level M? Okay, my answer is 18. 2, 8, um, 18. Then the following one should be 32. So my answer is supposed to be 18. So the answer there is C. Number 6. The elements P and R form the compound P2R. 
what is the correct electronic configuration of the atoms P and R? Um, R needs two of these, meaning the valence of this is one, the valence of R is two. So when you look at this, the valence of P is one, then this one is the valence is two because eight minus six is two. My answer is C. Okay, you have to revise on how to determine valency from an atom uh, from a grade 10 chemistry. Question seven, which substance has metallic bonding? Which substance has metallic bonding? Conducts electricity when solid, when in liquid. Set of products formed in reaction with oxygen, solid. Um, my answer is A. Because uh, if it has got metallic bonding, it means this, um, it's a metal. It's a metal. So metals conduct electricity in solid state and even in their molten state. Okay. Um, and then when they react with oxygen, they form oxides, which are usually powders of different colors. Okay. So for ion, it appears reddish, which is rust. For the group 1 and group 2 elements, it may appear white and gray of different degrees depending on the metal okay but it cannot be a gas okay and uh yeah my answer there is a question eight uh which of the following has the lowest mass which of the following has the lowest mass you have to convert this one to mass the moles to mass okay you're given the the substance here then you're given the moles here the formula to use is number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass or relative molecular mass or relative formula mass so my answer here after i did this calculation was b carbon 0.5 moles of carbon it will have 22 grams because one mole will have 44 grams iron has a very high mass beryllium oxide very high mass look at it one more nitrogen one more of nitrogen will have um, i mean sodium will have quite a high mass which is uh, 24 Okay, is it 24? Okay, you can check out the mass of sodium. But my answer, it came out as um, uh, carbon dioxide. Number nine, 0.1 moles of hydrate, um, of the hydrate, this one, X, N hydrate, contains 9 grams of water. What is the value of N in this formula here? So they have told me it's 0 0.1, so I say 0 0.1 contains 9 grams. Therefore, 1.0 should contain X grams. Therefore, in one more, because this formula represents one more, in one more, we're going to have X grams after I did my cross multiplication here, it gave me 90 grams. So I divide 90 grams by the molar mass of water, because this is water, so it is 18, so it's 5. My answer comes out as 8. I mean, as 5. Okay, my answer comes out as 5. Number 10, in order to determine the actual formula of a compound from its empirical formula, which X transformation is needed? Its molar mass. Okay, its molar mass is very, very important. Remember, uh, there's always that constant of constant is equals to molecular formula over empirical formula. Again, you have constant N is equals to uh, molecular mass over empirical mass. So you need the molar mass. Uh, in order to determine the actual formula of a compound from its empirical formula, which extra information is needed? Uh, you want the actual formula, which is this molecular formula, uh, from its empirical formula. Empirical formula. This is the empirical formula. So you need its molar mass. From this molar mass, you'll be able to find N because once you have the empirical formula, I mean the empirical mass, then you have the molar mass, you can find how many times the empirical formula goes in the molar mass. Okay, so my answer here is D. Question 11, nitrogen and hydrogen gases react according to the uh, equation below. That's the formation of ammonia. If 60 liters and of nitrogen and 60 liters of hydrogen are made to react, what would be the volume uh, of, what would be the volume compositions of the following gases after reaction? My answer there was uh, B, because uh, look at the molar ratios. Uh, these molar ratios will be in line with these uh, volume ratios here. Okay, so one more requires three moles. So if this is schisty, it requires three times of itself. So here it's supposed to be 120. No, not even 120, 180. Okay, so this match will only react with one third of this match. 
So one third of squeezed is a 20. Each 20 decimeter cubic or 20 liters here will require a skist because it's a 1 to 3. Okay, it's a 1 to 3 ratio. So my answer here comes out as 40. Comes out as 40. I hope I'm correct. But you can convert that to moles. I didn't convert to moles. It just went directly. I hope I'm, I'm right. But you can convert that to moles and confirm if I'm right or wrong. Okay, there's a question in front of us there, question 12. 1.0 grams calcium carbonate was reacted with excess dilute hydrochloric acid according to the equation. Calcium carbonate HCl gives us CaCl2, CO2, H2O. Um, given below, give, the diagram below shows the setup of the reaction. So you're having a acid here, lumps of calcium carbonate. As they react, they produce a gas. Water remaining liquid, but this gas will actually be um, released in this environment here, which will increase pressure. So, meaning somehow the plunge of the syringe will actually move backwards like that because there will be excess gas coming from the reaction here. Why would the setup above be practically impossible to collect all the gases at RTP? Why would the setup above be practically impossible? To collect all gas, all the gas, okay, all the gas at RTP. My answer here is powdered calcium carbonate must be used. So they used lumps of calcium carbonate instead of powdered because uh, why would the setup above be practically impossible to collect all the gas at RTP? Meaning you may not collect all the gas that would come from the reaction because the reaction will not go to to its completion properly because you're using lumps. Let's look at the first one. A catalyst must be added. No, you don't really need a catalyst for this reaction. It's simple. Acid reacts with carbonates produce a salt, CO2, and water. No gas is produced. No, that's not correct. The gas syringe is small. No, it's not really, really small. So they have told us one gram of calcium carbonate was reacted with excess dilute hydrochloric acid according to the reaction. So maybe let me do some calculations and uh, see my uh, side calculation and check if I thought this might produce but again when you check this 100 cubic centimeters if the gas that is going to be produced is be more than 100 then we'll say the syringe is small I'll change my answer so let me pause just a little bit there okay so I've checked it out I was trying to scribble things here this is 100 grams of calcium carbonate it's one more its mass is 100 grams 40 plus 12 plus this 16 times 3 gives us 48. So 100 grams gives us at RTP. We usually cling to RTP. You can check out the periodic table. It's rare that they give you STP conditions. So this is 24 decimeters, which is 24 liters. So 100 grams gives you 24 liters. Then they're using 1 gram. So if 100 gives you, if 100 gives you 24 liters, then why two of one gram? One gram is too small. So if you make this uh, kind of arrangement here, this ratio, then cross multiply to find x, you find that the syringe was big enough. The syringe was very big enough. So the only appropriate answer was C. Powdered calcium carbonate must be used to maximize on the amount of gas to be collected. 13. What mass of nickel is formed from a nickel? For this question, my answer is coming out as 1.2 grams. Okay, I converted this to charge because charge, which is Q, is equals to current times time, okay, which is coming out as three something. And then um, after that, I know to say nickel. Nickel has a valency of two, okay. So after all my calculations, I divide my, my charge by um, the valency, uh, or maybe the, I convert it to find the number of moles of electrons discharged. Then I distribute those moles uh, to the nickel atoms. I know to say each nickel atom has a charge of 2 plus. But after all those calculations, it's giving me 1 point something grams. So I'm out of all of these. I couldn't find an appropriate answer. I think there should have been something wrong with this question. Check it out. I mean, the answers, the question is okay, but the answers, I think one answer wasn't properly done. So check it out and do your calculations. 14. Which substance will conduct electricity? Aqua sodium chloride. It's an ionic compound. My answer is A. 15. Which products are formed at the anode and cathode when an, electro, an electric current is passed through molten lead to chloride? My answer is B. 
chlorine molecules, which is a gas, and the lead atoms at the cathode? My answer is B, electrochemistry. You can check out that one from a grade 12 material. Number 16, uh, an, an, an iron nail is to be... An iron nail is to be electroplated with silver. Which entries in the table are correct? My answer was D. At the anode, put silver metal. At the cathode, put the iron nail. And the electrolyte should be aqua silver nitrate. Aquas silver nitrate. Therefore, the silver from the electrolyte will be deposited onto the nail as um, the anode dissolves. Okay, so the answer there is D. Study the diagrams below. In which of the setups will the bulb light up? My answer is B. Where you have copper and magnesium, the two have got different reactivity uh, strengths uh, or different electropositivities or uh, positivity values. This is copper, 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 so they are of the same. But here, because of the difference in electropositivity, one metal is more positive than the other, so they can. Uh, exchange electrons, electron transfers can be done. The more negative one will receive the electrons. The more electropositive, meaning the more reactive one will lose electrons. My answer there is three only, which is B. Number 18, the table below shows the energy released by a complete combustion of some compounds used as fuels. Which fuel releases the least energy when one gram of the compound is completely burned? You look at uh, one gram, of the compound look benzene, heptane, octane, propane. My answer was benzene. Okay, relative molecular mass, enthalpy change, or amount of heat in kilojoules per mole. Okay, in kilojoules per mole. So when you go to one gram, uh, look at this one. Okay, look at this one and look at that one. My answer came out as um, um, which fuel releases the least energy when one gram of the compound is completely burnt? Um, this is per mole, okay, when you convert it to grams, uh, you will find that when you consider mass, when you consider mass, um, benzene will be your answer, okay, benzene is going to be your answer. When you, when you give a second look at this guy here, this guy, the guy has a smaller molecular mass, this one has a high molecular mass, it will reach one gram quicker than this one. So, for you to make one gram, you have to have more of these. The moment you have two or three of these to make one gram, then this value here is going to be more than this one here. So, uh, my answer came out as benzene. You figure that one out, figure out how I reached at benzene. Number 19, the diagram below shows an energy profile for a reaction. Which of the labeled parts on the diagram above represents the enthalpy change for the reaction reactants to products this is exothermic because the, the reactants i mean the products are lower in their energy content meaning they have released the reactants have released part of their internal energy to come at this lower energy um internal energy state which makes them more stable okay so my answer here is this arrow here this difference here which is a b our last question for this uh, part is below the reaction at equilibrium which of the following conditions should a manufacturer apply in order to increase the yield of hydrogen chloride gas increase pressure because pressure is uh, the aspect or factor which affects the rate of reaction of species that are in gaseous state okay increase pressure because look at the equation here uh, and look at its nature. So when you increase pressure, uh, you actually increase uh, the rate of reaction, the yield of this gas here. I end here for this part. I'll do the next part of 21 to 40, the next video. Bye-bye uh, for now.